Chapter Three of In the Sweet Dry and Dry. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. In the Sweet Dry and Dry by Christopher Morley and Bart Haley. Chapter Three. Incident of the Gooseberry Bombs. The day of the great parade dawned dazzling and clear, with every promise of heat. From the first blue of morning, while the streets were still cool and marble front steps moist from housemaids' sluicings crowds of bishop chuff's marchers came pouring into the city at the prearranged mobilization points where bands were stationed to keep the throngs amused until the immense procession could be arranged in line the press was terrific every trolley every suburban train every jitney was crammed with the panantis clad in white carrying the buttons ribbons and banners that had been prepared for this great occasion down with gooseberries the new menace was the terrifying legend printed on these emblems the boulevard had been roped off by the police by eight o'clock and the pavements were swarming with citizens many of whom had camped there all night in order to witness this tremendous spectacle as the sun surged pitilessly higher the temperature became painful the asphalt streets grew soft under the twinging feet of the panantis and waves of heat radiation shimmered along the vista of the magnificent highway to keep themselves cheerful the legions of chuff sang their new gooseberry anthem written by miss theo delinda chuff the bishop's daughter to the air of marching through georgia the rousing strains rose in unison from thousands of earnest throats the majesty of the song cannot be comprehended unless the reader will permit himself to hum to the familiar tune root up every gooseberry where satan winks his eye we will make the sinful earth a credit by and by europe may be stubborn but we'll legislate her dry and then we'll tackle the planets hurrah hurrah we're anti-everything hurrah hurrah an end to joy we sing come let's make life doleful and then death will lose its sting happiness is only a habit come then all ye citizens and join our stern verine we're the ones that put the crimp in whiskey beer and wine booze is gone and soon we'll make tobacco fall in line and then we'll tackle the planets hurrah hurrah we're anti-everything hurrah hurrah an end to joy we sing come let's make life doleful and then death will lose its sting happiness is only a habit we'll abolish every fruit attempting to ferment we will alter nature's law and teach her to repent let the fatal gooseberry proceed where cocktails went and then we'll tackle the planets chorus as before from the beginning of the day however it became apparent that there was a concerted movement under way to heckle the panantis as the gooseberry anthem came to an end a number of men were observed on the skyline of a tall building wig wagging with flags all eyes were turned aloft and much speculation ensued among the waiting thousands as to the meaning of the signals then a cry of anger burst from one of the section leaders who was acquainted with the morse code the flags were spelling what a day for a drink all down the boulevard the white and gold banners tossed in anger to those above the mass of agitated chuffs looked like a field of daisies in a wind shortly afterward the familiar buzz of airplane motors was heard and three silver gray machines came coasting above the channel of the boulevard they flew low and it was easy to read the initials c p h painted on the nether surface of their wings over the front ranks of the parade which was beginning to fall in line they executed a series of fantastic twirls then as though at a concerted signal they dropped a cloud of paper slips which came eddying down through the sunlight the chuffs scrambled for them wondering a sullen murmur rose when the messages were read they ran thus to make gooseberry wine paste this in your hat ten quarts of gooseberries thoroughly crushed over these five quarts of water are flushed twice round the clock let the fluid remain then through a sieve the blithe mixture you strain 
adding some sugar not less than ten pound and stirring it carefully round and around to the pulp of the fruit that remains in the sieve a gallon of pure filtered water you give this you let stand for a dozen hours then add to the other to strengthen its powers shut up the whole for the space of a day and it will ferment in a riotous way when you see by the froth that the fluid grows thicker you should skim it with glee for its turning to liquor while it ferments please continue to skim at the end you may murmur the bartender's hymn this makes a booze that is potent enough seal in a hogshead and hide it from chuff corporation for the perpetuation of happiness the panantis were still muttering furiously over this daring act of defiance when a shrill bugle call pealed down the avenue bishop chuff rode out into the middle of the street on his famous coal-black charger john barleycorn there was a long hush then with a wave of his hand he gave the signal one hundred bands burst into the sombre and clanging strains of the face on the barroom floor the great parade had begun from a housetop farther up the street dunraven bleak watched them come he had taken quibbleton's word seriously and with his usual enterprise had rented a roof overlooking the boulevard on which several members of the balloon staff were prepared to deal with any startling events that might occur a battery of telephones had been installed on the housetop bleak himself sat with apparatus clamped to his head like an operator at central two reporters were busy with paper and pencil the cartoonist sat on the cornice with legs swinging above two hundred feet of space sketching the prodigious scene the young lady editor of the woman's page was there with opera glasses noting down the among those present it was an awe-inspiring spectacle between sidewalks jammed with silent and morose citizens the pan antis passed like a conquering army the terrible bishop the man who had put military discipline into the ranks of his mighty organization rode his horse as the kaiser would have liked to ride entering paris his small bitter fanatical face wore a deeply carved sneer his great black beard flapped in the breeze and he sang as he rode behind him came huge floats depicting in startling tableau the hideous menace of the gooseberry bands blared and crashed then rank on rank as far as i could see following the zealots in their garments of white each one it was noticed carried a neat knapsack huge tractors rumbled along groaning beneath a tonnage of tracks which were shot into the watching crowd by pneumatic guns banners whipped and fluttered the sound of shrill chanting vibrated in the blazing air like a visible wave of power of these were conquerors of a nation and they knew it a former bartender standing in the front of the crowd caught chuff's merciless gaze wavered and swooned a retired distiller sitting in the window of the brass rail club fell dead of apoplexy bleak trembled with nervousness had quimbleton hoaxed him what could halt this mighty pageant now he was about to telephone to his city editor to go ahead with the one o'clock edition as originally planned from the sky came a roar of engines that drowned for a moment the thundering echoes of the parade the three gray planes which had been circling far above swooped down almost to a level with the tops of the buildings one of these a huge two-seated bomber passed directly over bleak's head he craned upward and caught a glimpse of what he thought at first was a white pennant trailing over the bulwark of the cockpit a snowy shag of whiskers came tossing down through the air and fell in his lap it was quimbleton's beard torn from its moorings by the tug of wind pressure bleak thrust it quickly in his pocket as the great plane passed over the head of the parade flying dangerously low every face save that of the iron-willed bishop was turned upward but even in their curiosity the rigid discipline of the pan antis prevailed now they were singing to the tune of the old gray mare old john barleycorn he ain't what he used to be ain't what he used to be ain't what he used to be old john barleycorn he ain't what he used to be many a year ago the great volume of gusty sound hurled aloft by these thousands of sky-pointing mouths created an air pocket in which the bombing plane tilted dangerously for a moment bleak 
who was watching the plane thought it was going to careen into a tailspin and crash down fatally then he saw quimbleton still recognizable by an adhering shred of whisker lean over the side of the fuselage a small dark object dropped through the air fell with a loud pop on the street a few yards in front of the bishop a faint green vapor arose misting for a moment the proud figures of chuff and his horse at the same instant the other two planes throbbing down the line of the parade discharged a rain of similar projectiles along the vacant strip of paving between the marching chuffs and the police-lined curb an eddying emerald fume filled the street drifting with the brisk air down through all the ranks of the procession there were shouts and screams the clanging band squawked discordantly holy cat shouted the cartoonist poison gas nix said bleak revealing quimbleton's secret in his excitement gooseberry bombs every chuff that inhales it will be properly soused oh boy some story look at the bish he's got a snootful already his face has turned black the whole crowd has turned black said the cartoonist almost falling off his perch in a frantic effort to see more clearly through the olive haze that filled the street it was true above the thousands of white figures they had emerged from the intoxicating cloud bank of gooseberry gas grinned ghastly inhuman blackened faces with staring goggle eyes the bishop was most frightful of all his horse was prancing and swaying wildly and the bishop's transformed features were diabolic his whole profile had altered seemed black and shapeless as the face of a tadpole the amazing truth burst upon bleak chuff and his paraders were wearing gas masks these were what they had carried in their knapsacks indomitable chuff who had foreseen everything poor quimbleton said bleak this will break his heart his neck too i fancy said one of the others pointing to the sky and indeed one of the three planes was seen falling tragically to earth behind the tower of the city hall the cloud of gas was rapidly drifting off down the boulevard and through the exhilarating and delicious fog the pan antis waved their defiant banners unscathed the progress of the parade however was halted by the behavior of the bishop's horse for which no mask had been provided the noble animal under this sudden and extraordinary stimulus was almost human in its actions at first it stood whinnying sharply and pawing the air with one forefoot as though feeling for the brass rail as one of bleak's companions said it raised its head proudly with open mouth and expanded nostrils then dashing off across the broad street it seemed eager to climb a lamp-post and only the fierce restraint of the bishop held it in one of the chuffs perhaps only lukewarm in loyalty ran up and offered to give his mask to the horse but was sternly motioned back to the ranks by the infuriated leader who was wildly wrestling to gain control of the exuberant animal at last the horse solved the problem by lying down in the street on the top of the bishop and going to sleep an ambulance marked federal home for inebriates canna new jersey dashed up with shrilling gong this had been arranged by quimbleton who had wired a requisition for an ambulance to remove one intoxicated bishop as the bishop was quite in command of his faculties the horse after some delay was hoisted into the ambulance instead the bishop was given a dusting and the parade proceeded the self-control of the police alone averted prolonged and frightful disorder for when the conduct of the horse was observed thousands of spectators fought desperately to get through the ropes and out into the fumes that still lingered in wisps and whirls of green vapour others tore off their coats and attempted to bag a few cubic inches of the gas in these garments but the police with a devotion to duty that was beyond praise kept the mob in check and themselves bore the brunt of the lingering acid only one man who leaped from an office window with an improvised parachute really succeeded in getting into the middle of the boulevard and he refused to be ejected on the ground that he was chief of the street cleaning department this department by the way was given a remarkable illustration of the fine public spirit of the citizens for by three o'clock 
in the afternoon two hundred thousand applications had been received from those eager to act as volunteer street cleaners and help scour the boulevard after the passage of the great parade End of chapter three